welcome to Science Communicators. My name is Anne and I'll be your host for today's panel. And I would like to begin by gratefully acknowledging that Science World is located on the traditional and unceded Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil village sites of Sonora. And as we're joining our event from different lands today, I encourage you all to do your research and to know whose indigenous lands we're on so that we can all properly and respectfully treat the lands that we're living, working, and or studying on. Okay. Oh, if we should see participants in a few, should we wait a few more minutes then, Don? They're not saying anything, so I would just carry on, I think. Awesome. Um, all right, so we will start today with a quick introduction from our amazing group of mentors. And then after that, we're going to have our hosted discussion. So if you have any questions for the mentors, please feel free to put those in the chat at any time and we will get to them. And our technician today is Don, who will be monitoring the chat. So if you have any technical issues, Don would be happy to assist. And we hope or we ask that you keep comments in the chat and questions section respectful and relevant to the topics being discussed. So now it's time to meet our mentors. So let's start by going around and doing a brief introduction before we jump into the questions. So mentors, if you can um, just say hi for a little bit. <laughs> Tell us your name, your job title, and one thing that you love most about your career. And again, let's do the tagging thing where after you finish your response, just tag the person that will go right after you. And Lorraine, why don't we start with you? I'm Lorraine Graves. I'm a science journalist, a public speaker, and um, a plain language translator. I also work with a lot of immigrants, particularly immigrant women in STEAM. And um, I love my job because I get paid to learn for a living and I can call up anyone anywhere in the world and say, tell me what you're doing. Uh, why don't you tag the next person Lauren? Susan? Oh, I'll, I'll, oh, okay. Okay. Um, I'm Susan Richards DeWitt. I'm a management consultant. So what that means is I create partnerships for people who are innovators that have creative ideas and they're looking for funding or they're looking for other like minds to partner with. Um, and what I love most about my job is how it brings me into STEAM, into STEM, but also into some really cool philanthropy areas um, so it's quite a diverse role, and I get quite a bit of freedom in my work. How about you, Ella? Hi, my name is Ella. Um, I do a lot of science communication through video. So I have a YouTube channel um, called SciFiles, but I also work with GenomeBC doing some educational videos for them as well. I'm also a medical student at UBC's uh, Vancouver Medical School. So there's some science communication even in the healthcare field as well. Um, I'll tag Juliana. Hi, thanks, Ella. Um, I've been working in science and tech in various ways for 18 or so years now. And currently, and for the last while, I've had a career as a digital marketer, as well as um, a digital product development specialist, which means I would contribute to research and building things like apps and, and different sort of web platforms. Um, Ages ago, I previously worked as an archaeologist, so that's just like a, a tip off to how diverse uh, your career path can be when you're in these fields. There's lots of different ways to go. And probably what I've enjoyed most is that aspect of it, as well as the continuous learning opportunities that are available from the various sorts of um, mentors I've had and different people I've had the pleasure of working with from technology to scientists to science communicators and beyond. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, mentors. Okay, so now we're going to get to the exciting part, our questions. Um, so now we'll open up the questions from the chat. So if you have any burning questions for our wonderful mentors, feel free to pop those in the chat right now and we will get to them. So just to get the ball rolling, I'll ask one of my own questions. Um, so Susan, how did you get started in your career or what motivated or push you towards your career? Um, 
how did I get started in my career? So I, I think I, I did um, an undergraduate degree in English lit, and then I did a, a journalism master's, and then I started with a PR firm. Um, and that launched me into my management consulting. And that opened me up wide, as I said in my introduction to all kinds of areas of um, STEAM. Um, I think one of the key things that I really wanted to bring forward, forward. Though, today is just the idea of finding mentors. And I have a little slide to share. And with mentors, sometimes we think that um, our parents, our friends um, guide us, or even our career counselors at school guide us into um, sort of noticing what our interests are, what way we're gonna go. But I have, a Dawn will pop up a little share screen for me. Um, just an example of mentors, they can be um, people that you admire or um, sometimes even a sibling. Um, and they can launch us into um, new areas, new ways of thinking. And it's not always the people that support us into our goals that we think they are. So I just really encourage you to expand who your mentors are. Think about people in the public eye that you admire or it could be a friend's sister. So I think it's coming up here. Just one quick slide, it's downloading. Um, in my case, I've got, I'm going to show a slide with three women on it. Um, I'll see if that comes up, but I'll speak to it anyway. Basically, uh, the first one is my colleague and friend, uh, Dr. Alexandra Greenhill. And, you know, she started as a physician and then became an entrepreneur with Care Team Technologies. And so she sort of says, and instead of or oh, I want to be this, I want to be a, a doctor, mm, but I really want to help the world using technology. Well, she's doing both. She found a way to do both. The second one is my daughter, and she is a mentor to me. I, I know I'm a mentor to her as well, but I think she is a mentor to me. She inspires me. Um, she is a student at SFU in, in mechatronics engineering, which is robotics. And she's really pioneering and being brave to venture into an area that has typically been male dominated. And the last one is Alexandra Morton, who has um, a marine biologist and an activist, and she's really protecting our southern resident orcas. When you go to Science World, you're going to see the exhibit about the southern residents. So there's just such a diverse way. And these are people that I've reached out to or that I have in my life that help to guide my career. And I, I really encourage you to think about mentors. Um, how about you, uh, Juliana? Hi, I'm sorry, I'm just, how did I get started in my career? We're still doing that question, Anne. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, like a lot of people, I actually didn't have like a super strong direction when I went to my undergrad in university which would be sort of the foundation of my career. I didn't have a lot of guidance, so I dabbled a lot. But that dabbling, while, you know, I would recommend mentorship early and some, like, you know, the ability to explore and have some strong ideas, my dabbling led me into a path of uh, science, really. And um, my other great love was is writing and reading and literature. So I did a dual major in archaeology and English literature, similar to Susan. Um, and that took me uh, on a career path of being an archaeologist initially, and then doing lots of communication um, in technology, um, starting with the early days of social media, and blogging, and writing, and then communication, technical writing around developing products, um, with technical products and digital products like apps and different sort of like web players and all sorts of things across digital properties. So um, across that career, I've met lots of different people and been exposed to lots of different roles, which has probably been one of the greatest sort of gifts of having a career in, in this space. And it would be a journey that I would wish for anybody else to have as well. Um, and it's one of the most exciting things about working in, in STEAM are the year jumping off points to explore new things. So I would just echo Susan a bit on that because that also can come from mentors and also just you know your colleagues and being curious and 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 just letting yourself explore um so on that note i'll i'll are we, are we all through this question or we're we bringing it over to ella for thinking about your start 
I can ask Ella another question. I have another question for Ella, actually. So thank you, Susan and Juliana, so much for all of your advice and and wonderful just, you know, words and insights. Um, definitely having very powerful or like powerful women in your life are really important to empower you to, you know, do better and to also, like Juliana said, explore more careers and really get ourselves out there and get our hands and our feet dirty and really try out all of the careers. Um, but Ella, I have another question for you. Speaking about advice, what advice would you give a 12 year old who is interested in your line of work? Yeah, definitely. Um, that's a great question. So I actually got started doing YouTube videos when I was 12 years old. Um, so my first piece of advice would probably be to uh, get started. And if you're interested in something, go for it. Like there's no age minimum that you have to be um, to start communicating science. Um, so when I started when I was 12, I had absolutely no idea like anything about science at all. I recently learned how to make a microscope slide and I just sort of went from there. Um, so there's really no level um, that you have to be at to begin communicating science or to begin and acting as a mentor to others. And so that's my first piece of advice. The second is to reach out to those um, around you. We've been talking a lot about women role models today, um, but really there are, um, are so many amazing women um, that might be in your lives or around, or you can always reach out um, through these mentorship programs um, and just try and find people that will help be your advocates um, through your whole career. So yeah, um, I guess my two pieces of advice are just uh, try and go for it if there's something that you're interested in and uh, reach out to those around you. Um, should I pass the question on? Uh, yeah, Lorraine, what kind of advice would you give to a 12 year old if they are interested in your line of work? Don't worry so much. Taste it all. Try it all. Because by accident, that's what I did. I knew from the time I was small, I was going to be a doctor. And everything was geared to that. But I loved the arts. I loved performing. I loved watching the arts. And I always worked in, in TV or radio or in newspaper for fun. And science journalism didn't exist as a career then. And um, I got into this career because I lost my job. I'd been working, I'd gotten a summer job as a university student working at a large research facility, decided not to go back in the fall and they kept extending and extending my uh, contract till they finally made it permanent. And the director of her facility said, well, actually it pays enough a man should get it. So I didn't get my own job. And I started calling contacts. I didn't know the concept of networking. I knew what I wanted to do. And I called contacts that could help me um, on that path. And one suggested something else. So I pivoted and gave that a try. And I got a whole career as a science journalist out of that when science journalism didn't exist as a career. I was one of the first three broadcast journalists in science and tech in Canada. And it was a struggle because I learned broadcast journalism as I learned to be a science reporter and uh, it was worth it. So don't, if I had known how things would turn out, I wouldn't have worried so much. Um, ask people. I, when I started my national TV series on science that CBC picked up, the first thing I did is I made a list of 20 people. I called them for advice. And the worst thing that happened was one person said, I don't have time. The rest gave me time, gave me advice. And then I realized I now had 19 mentors and they were valuable and they were contacts. By calling and asking for advice, I didn't realize, but you start the relationship with a compliment and it's worked out very well. And we're going to have six different careers in our lifetime. So be open. And if you think you know exactly what you want to do at 12, you're probably delusional. <laughs> <laughs> And um, who's next? Um, well, thank you for sharing, Ella and Lorraine. Oh, I almost combined both of your names there. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, but yeah, great advice, really utilizing all of our contacts. And, you know, even if, like you said, we don't know what networking is, really just reaching out to all of our contacts. And you never know. You never know. There's always something or there for you or someone there to help you. Fantastic. Okay. Um, I think we only have five more minutes for our panel. Um, so I just have one last question for all of us. Um, how about we do something fun and answer uh, this question? 
what is something really cool about your job that most people don't know about? And Juliana, why don't we start with you? I'm unmuting. I'll speak quickly about the two different careers I've had in, in STEAM. So as an archaeologist, easily the, the best thing and the something that's fun about that job is when you discover or you're part of a team that discovers a new artifact or an archaeological site, being the first person in hundreds or thousands of years to encounter that and really then getting to work with a bunch of other people who are like equally interested as well as the cultures that you're working within, the First Nations people or whatever, to piece together um, the story of maybe how that thing was used, uh, the people who used it, the context it was used. Um, it's, it's truly a thrill and that's wonderful. And um, in my current job, I, like <laughs> learning new technologies. Like, I mean, they're from, from the early days of blogging to, you know, Twitter first coming online and being a way that people communicated with their friends to what it is now, just the trajectory of seeing tech grow and change and all the ways that it's made our lives so much more interesting and fascinating and getting to be a part of that growth curve and, and dabbling in all the things that I want and learning skills like video and coding and different things like that. So yeah, I mean, that would be what I think is the best parts of my career um, and the parts that I enjoy most and the journey that I wish for other people to have. Awesome. Thank you, Juliana. How about you, Susan? I think some of the most fun things about my career, um, I think bringing that female perspective to everything that I do, I think that we do design a little different, we strategize a little different and we complement um, what some of our male colleagues, the way they think and the things that they do. And I think um, just keeping that open mind and knowing that as a young girl and a young woman, that the world is really our oyster and today's world being digitized, we can really use those tools to have more of a global reach and a bigger impact. And that we really think about the power of our voice and how in our work, as we're designing and innovating and being curious and creating new ways in the world going forward, that we do have a lot of power and special gifts as young women and um, on the world. So just remember that is a superpower. I love you? that advice. Sorry, I just had to chime in and just say, I love that, Susan, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that was really insightful. Thank you so much, Susan. How about you, Ella? Yeah, there's a lot of things um, that I like from my, I guess, like two different uh, career perspectives. I think the thing that's the most um, interesting from my science communication perspective is just seeing how um, many people are interested in learning science, but who might not sort of have the initial exposure that makes them think that they can get into a career in science. So just making sure that science is really accessible. Um, I try that, I do that through a lot of like kitchen experiments or experiments that you don't have to go out and buy ingredients for. Um, and so I think it's really awesome how in science communication, you can really approach people where, where they're at at any level. And so that's something that I really love. Thank you, Ella. Um, did you ever tell us what your YouTube channel is? Do you want to tell us? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, my YouTube channel is called SciFiles. And so you can find it at youtube.com uh, slash SciFiles. And that's S-C-I-F-I-L-E-S. Fantastic. Thank you, Ella. We will definitely check that out. <laughs> okay, last but not least, Lorraine, what is something cool about your job that most people don't know about? Oh, so sorry, you're muted, Lorraine. I learned to not be shy on the phone. I used to hate even calling the doctor's office. And gradually through just doing it, I learned that I can call anyone anywhere in the world who and that I'm interested in. I got to interview Oliver Sacks when he was alive. They're hard to interview once they're dead. Um, who wrote the movie Awakenings. Um, I got to interview all these interesting people. I got to promote women in STEM. And um, it is great to have a woman's curiosity come to this. And women's culture is different from men's and I love that it's much more inclusive, more web structure and not as hierarchical. And that we can bring our priorities 
um, to what we are learning. And then the other fun thing that people don't understand is I get to make it relevant. I get to make it um, simple and clear to understand because if basically, if you can sort laundry, you can do anything. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Lorraine. All right, so it looks like we are at time here. It was fantastic getting to meet all of you all today. Huge kudos to our wonderful, wonderful mentors. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you so much for sharing your experience and your wisdom with us. <laughs> we really, really appreciate all of your time and all of your work. Um, yeah, I think we are good. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Anne. Thank, you, Thank you, Anne. And just remember, live vibrantly, taste and try it all. There'll be time to bring it all together later. And I, my final words would be, say and instead of or. If you have conflicting I things, I want to be an artist. Oh, but I like computer science. Oh, those combine well. So say and instead of or. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.